Well, first of all, this election is more than Herschel Walker. This election is about the people. No, you did not mishear that. <laughs> I'm going to get to the clip again. This erection, this erection is about the people. That is, of course, uh, Herschel Walker, Republican Senate candidate for Georgia in the upcoming runoff there on Fox News, sandwiched between Ted Cruz and Lindsey Graham, for some reason, while making this obvious gaffe. I mean, I have to assume it's a mistake, <laughs> but maybe it really is about his erection and how it's for the people. But I'm going to get to, so I'll play this clip again because it's fantastic. But I'm going to get to a pattern I have noticed with Herschel Walker interviews, as well as a clip from a high-profile Republican in his state that is still unwilling to endorse him. But first here, let's once again enjoy how this erection is for the people. Well, first of all, this election is more than Herschel Walker. This erection is about the people. And I said this is we the people, not we the government. What's amazing about this clip, I mean, there's a few things. I'm going to get to... Eh, the fantastic look that Ted Cruz and Lindsey Graham give each other, and then I'll get to the pattern I've noticed with these Herschel Walker interviews and the other clip about the Republican in the state. But this erection... <laughs> I just did it myself. This election is kind of about Herschel Walker's erection in the sense that he has had multiple abortions that he is still denying, but the proof is out there, while he is anti-abortion. So, look, it's one thing to have, you know, a random gaffe. It's funny, whatever. But when there is a pattern of this, not this exactly, but there's a pattern of Herschel Walker saying ridiculous things, in addition to how erections do kind of relate <laughs> to Herschel Walker's campaign and exposing how he is just a complete fraud, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's too perfect. But... Let me first show you this, this this look that Ted Cruz and Lindsey Graham give each other. I mean, <laughs> this is, understand, this is why they're there. In case there is a moment like this, or Herschel Walker says something ridiculous, they're able to come in and reframe the discussion around the election and why the election for them is so important or why they claim it's so important. So this is just, they clearly heard what Herschel Walker said here, because the, they they looked at each other right after. They do exactly. I mean, if if somehow I was there, I would I would not be able to not crack up. Um, but they were able to uh, keep their composure there. Now, here is the pattern I have. No actually, before I get to the pattern, this is part of the pattern, actually. I watched this whole interview. The <laughs> Lindsey Graham's face here. I watched this whole interview. And Interestingly, out of everyone in this interview, Herschel Walker spoke the least. So before I get to more on that, I'm going to play just a quick clip here. This is the first three questions that Sean Hannity asks this panel. Herschel, we, I, I saw the contest with you and Lindsay doing the push-up contest. This race is important. Maybe some people don't think it's important. I think it is important. Lindsey Graham will ask you, we'll start with you. Vote and give. All right, Ted Cruz, I, I, this has been a very hard election. So those are the first three questions. It wasn't until five minutes into the interview that Sean Hannity finally asked Herschel Walker about his race. It took five minutes to get to the actual election and talking to Herschel Walker, the actual candidate, about it. The first question he asked was about push-ups. And then he moves on to Ted Cruz and Lindsey Graham for the next five minutes. So I timed this out because I guess this is my job. <laughs> Lindsey Graham spoke for two minutes and one second. Ted Cruz spoke for three minutes and four seconds. And Herschel Walker, one minute and 44 seconds. So even though this is Herschel Walker's race, and you, one would assume, you know, if you're going to be on with two other senators, they would be just the backup to support what you're saying. But no, it's the reverse. <laughs> Lindsey Graham and Ted Cruz take the lead while Herschel Walker is sort of in the background. It is, this is the pattern I have noticed. So many times now, Herschel Walker has appeared in conservative media with other people, mainly Ted Cruz and <laughs> Lindsey Graham. So, of course, this example... Here is uh, also this week, this is six days ago, 
Lindsey Graham and Herschel Walker. Here is Herschel Walker and Ted Cruz on November 10th. Here is Lindsey Graham again and Herschel Walker on the 26th, uh, October 26th. So this is, and I'll get to the other clip in a second. This is unheard of. I Can you think of another example where there has been a candidate that is running and they appear again and again and again with other politicians in these interviews? This just doesn't happen. Now, imagine if, say, John Fetterman, who had a stroke, was still recovering from a stroke, would have a good reason to maybe have someone else on with him in these interviews, uh, another senator on with him. He didn't have this. This wasn't going on. And if that did go on, you can imagine the attacks from the right where they'd be saying, hey, look, Fetterman can't even fight for himself. He has to have someone on with him. But here, Herschel Walker, again and again and again, on with other senators, doing most of the talking. And (laughs) this is just, I guess, completely normal now, even though this is the only instance that I can even think of where this has happened consistently. It really is bizarre, but it goes to, again, they're doing this because they're afraid of those sorts of erection moments where if something ridiculous is said or if no one understands what the hell Herschel Walker is saying, you have Lindsey Graham, Ted Cruz, or whoever to come in there and explain uh, what the election is about. Now, let me get to this clip. This is um, Lieutenant Governor uh, Jeff Duncan uh, in Georgia. He is a Republican, and he does not endorse Herschel Walker. <laughs> Even though it's his state, he's a Republican. Here is his answer on CNN. You're not going to have control of the Senate, regardless of what happens in this race in Georgia, as you know. So given that, does Herschel Walker have your endorsement? Yeah, I think it's interesting to watch the statistics. AARP came out with a, a poll today uh, that the AJC ran that 5147, which is still within the margin of error, breaking towards Warnock. Uh, and I think there's, you know, a little bit surprising. It feels like the Delta should be more than that. But I think it's one, Governor Kemp came out strong on Saturday in support of Herschel Walker, which obviously he, he's done well. But also Donald Trump failed in his announcement, right? It just seems like a national dud. And uh, if it would have been a success and it would have been the talk of the town, I think you would have seen uh, Herschel Walker maybe have a little bit tougher time uh, keeping it as close as it is. But another interesting s- statistic, yeah. uh, 5439 is the in- independence in that same poll uh, for Warnock. And I think this is a turnout game. If we can get folks to turn out, uh, and like I said, I've been critical throughout this whole process. I just felt like, uh, you know, Herschel Walker had a hard time getting my attention as a rock-solid conservative. Yeah. Uh, just because he was famous and just because Donald Trump supported him wasn't enough to get my respect or my vote. So a Republican in his state, a high-ranking Republican official, a lieutenant governor, does not support Herschel Walker. <laughs> now, I'm going to get to more on that in a second here and maybe the reason why he feels the freedom to do this. But... First, I just want to mention a point that I forgot to mention earlier about why Herschel Walker often appears on with other senators, and that is because of racism. So this is another important piece where the conservative base, of course, we're talking 90% white. So to have a senator who isn't white running for, uh, or to have a candidate who isn't right running to be senator is a unique thing in the party. So to have him on, have him appear with someone like Lindsey Graham, and Ted Cruz, two of the most pasty white individuals in the Senate, I think the the other part of why they do that is to try and sort of sell Herschel Walker to the voter base. But now back to, um, you know, Jeff Duncan here. Quote, we didn't put our best person forward, outgoing Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan on potential Walker Warnock runoff. This is why he feels the freedom to do this. How many times now have we seen Republicans who are retiring or leaving or whatever, people that aren't going to stay in their positions, all of a sudden feel the freedom to finally see the light and criticize what is obvious to everyone else. So it goes to show like this guy shouldn't get any credit for being able to say this or feeling the the freedom to do this now because it's not going to hurt him to do this now. He's already leaving. But it it, it goes it goes to the point that every every major every national Republican figure, I have to imagine the vast majority of them, except for someone like, you know, Taylor Green or Lauren Boebert, are able to recognize this insanity. 
the the insanity of someone like uh, Herschel Walker, but they don't care because they themselves are also insane. They just have a little more awareness of their insanity and what they intend to do with their power. So that is what all this is about, is power. 